Hi guys, welcome to my dual build of the Tyrrell P34 Formula 1 car from Tamiya. The P34 is famous for being the only 6 wheel Formula 1 car ever to race and ever to win a race. I'll start by telling you a bit about the kits from Tamiya and then while I'm doing the build I'll tell you a bit more about the cars themselves. So this first kit here was released by Tamiya in 1977 and it represents the P34 as driven in the 1976 F1 season. This is not quite the kit that I'm building. Then in 2003 Tamiya released the 1977 version of the car with this new blue and white livery. This version of the car has some minor changes to the front suspension and the cockpit but they're very small and in fact Tamiya only include one extra sprue for those changes as well as the extra decals of course. This is one of the kits I'll be building. Then in 2017 Tamiya re-released their original kit of the all blue 1976 version of the car but they added some photo etch to it. Now this photo etch doesn't just add extra detail but it also enables you to build a slightly different version of the car because it includes the big rectangular rear wing which was used in the Japanese Grand Prix that year and that's not in the original release. So that's the other version of the kit that I'll be building in this video. I hope that all makes sense. Because these cars are extremely similar, I'm going to show you one or the other of them during the video, but of course I'm not going to show you the same process twice, um, and I'll just highlight any differences between them. So with that said, let's get on with the build. While I'm doing that, and while I'm breaking things down into sub-assemblies, I'll tell you a bit more about the Tyrrell P34. So the P34 was designed for the 1976 F1 season, and it was driven by Jody Schechter and Patrick Depaillet. The idea behind it was that if you have four wheels at the front rather than two, you can make them smaller and maintain the same amount of grip. But by making them smaller, you can move those wheels out of the airstream behind the bodywork and thus you can improve the aerodynamic efficiency of the car by reducing drag. Back in those days, the Ford Cosworth DFV engine was really commonly used in F1, which made a lot of the cars uh, quite equal in performance and therefore the teams had to strive for other ways to improve performance and get that competitive edge. And that's what Ken Tyrrell decided to do with this six wheel car. The car was competitive straight away and Jody Schechter took its first and it would turn out only victory at the 1976 Swedish Grand Prix on only the third time out. Schechter would take four more podiums that season with Depaillet taking another five. For the 1977 season, Jody Schechter who hated the car left the team and was replaced by Ronnie Peterson. The car itself was slightly redesigned to improve its aerodynamics, including apparently making it a bit wider. I think Tamiya have handily gotten around this by making their 1977 model based on the Monaco Grand Prix version, which I think was the only time that year that they ran the 1976 chassis but with a 1977 livery. So Tamiya didn't need to uh, alter their moulds in that case. If you want a model of the main 1977 design, which features a different engine cover, I think Fujimi make one in 1 20th scale. The car was nowhere near as competitive in the 1977 season, with the highest finish being second in Japan for Depaye. Peterson scored one third place and Depaye scored two more, but overall the car was nowhere near as competitive as it was during its first season. One of the main reasons for this is apparently that the small front tyres, which were specially made for the car by Goodyear, suffered from less development and improvement compared to the standard tyres which were used by the other teams. Sensing this decline in relative performance, Tyrrell's car for the 1978 season was a standard four-wheel design. However, Tyrrell weren't the only team to experiment with six-wheel cars. Arrows, Ferrari and Williams all had experimental cars with four wheels at the back and two wheels at the front. However, none of these cars actually raced. In 1983, the governing body of F1 changed the rules and required that all cars have exactly four wheels and that only two of those wheels could be driven, thus cementing the P34's position in F1 history as the only six-wheel car to race and the only six-wheel car to win a Grand Prix. Sadly, such were the dangers of F1 at the time that only one of the three drivers that drove this car survived and retired from the spot. Jody Schechter would go on to win the Formula 1 World Championship in 1979 with Ferrari. 
Ronnie Peterson left the Tyrrell team for our Lotus in 1978 and was sadly killed at that year's Italian Grand Prix. Depaye would move on to Ligier and then Alfa Romeo, where he was sadly killed in practice for the 1980 German Grand Prix. The Tyrrell team continued for many years in Formula 1, although they never again had the success that they enjoyed in the early 1970s. Their final victory came at the hands of Michele Alboreto in the 1983 Canadian Grand Prix, and the team's final season was 1998, before they were bought out and rebranded as British American Racing. Now, while I've been wittering away, you'll see that I've built up most of the Ford DFV engine, plus the transmission and the attached suspension. Of course, the cars of this era had their engines exposed, so it's really important that we get the detail there, and Tamiya seemed to have uh, come through with that. As you can see, the top of the car is largely a single piece. Then we have these two pieces that come together to form the upper cockpit, and we need to sand the inside of those because, of course, it will be visible. This is the first difference here between the two versions. The blue version is the 1976 version, and this white sprue here is new in the 1977 version. The main difference simply being that notch at the front of the piece there for an extra suspension piece. And also notice that the newer tool bit here is much cleaner. The seats are also very similar, the only difference being a slightly revised headrest and in the new version some slots for some fabric seat belts. The cars both come with a chrome sprue. Most parts are the same, but we have a slightly revised roll bar here. A slightly different shape. I dry fitted those in position and glued on their supports, but I left them separate for now because I want to paint the chrome parts separately. Both of the kits give us a driver figure. I don't normally include these, partly because I find the lack of decals for the driver's suits makes them look a bit unrealistic, and partly because applying the decals for the helmets is quite difficult, but this time I decided to include them. The cockpit was built up just with dry fitting to enable me to get the steering wheel into place, and then to glue the driver's arms into the correct position so the hands would fit on the wheel. You may have noticed the 1976 version featured photo etched um, brake discs. We also have some photo etched details here for the driver's pedals. They simply add a small amount of texture. I'm not really sure how visible that detail will be, but nevertheless they were added. Equally the revised 1976 kit has the photo etched radiator grills. Perhaps they're a bit finer than the uh, plastic moulding, but not by a huge amount. One area that was quite different and was worth the effort to build it up is the rear wing here. This is the 76 version and it's a photo etched piece. We've got the photo etched end plates as well as that photo etched lower mounting point. The two um, aerodynamic surfaces are just plastic but the rest is photo etched. And that's specific to this revision of the 1976 kit, it's the Japanese Grand Prix version. Here is that mounting piece. You need to make sure you get it the right way so you bend it the right way because it's not quite symmetrical. I don't have a photo etch bending tool so I generally use the edge of a steel ruler but it probably would be better of course to have a proper tool. Here we see the photo etch end plates clearly a lot thinner than the plastic versions, and our mounting point that goes into the slots there. As photo etch goes, it looks complicated, but to me I have done quite a lot to help you out. I haven't shown the build-up of the front suspension system because the video will be long enough as it is. It's a fairly simple uh, set of pieces. 
again with photo etch brake discs there for the 76 kit. There are on the 77 version some additional air intakes too. With that done I had a lot of sub-assemblies which required painting. Here you can see most of them, most of which have had their primer coat, some of which have also had either X18 semi-gloss black applied over the top or aluminium in the case of the engine. This is Vallejo metal colour aluminium for the engine which always comes out well and Tamiya X10 gunmetal for the transmission. I sometimes struggle to spray Tamiya X18 semi-gloss black but when I get it right it does look good and of course there are lots of semi-gloss black parts on here. The great thing about the Vallejo metal colour is it airbrushes just as well as its brush paints straight from the bottle. So here I'm using it to add some details to the suspension. In general when I'm brush painting details like this I'm using Vallejo model colour and their black must be one of the most common paints I use. So with the detail painting done, I could start to assemble the engine, the transmission and the rear suspension. Here I use small amounts of super glue, being very careful to make sure that the contact surfaces were free of paint. And I did lots of dry fitting on this because even the slightest misalignment would throw the whole thing out. Then it was time to move on to the bodywork. I find that white primer is a much better primer for colours like the blue here, but it's quite difficult to cover the plastic with the white primer alone. So what I tend to do is give everything a coat of Tamiya grey primer and then put the white primer down on top of that. Finally I give the top coat, which in this case is Tamiya TS15. And between each of those layers, the, the grey primer, the white primer and the final paint, I have made sure to check carefully for any defects. I've given the surface a um, sand with some high grit sandpaper to keep it nice and smooth. And I think really that process and that sort of uh, sanding and priming and sanding again has been the biggest thing I've learned in building F1 cars and improving their paint finish. You can see that the initial coats here of the blue haven't necessarily reached all of the corners. So I tried to apply it in several light coats in order to achieve that and of course making sure I'm coming in from different angles. Here are the two cars side by side, all painted with Tamiya rattle cans. Then I had to paint the interior of the cars aluminium, which meant some very precise masking and careful airbrushing to avoid damaging that coat I've just put down. Attachment of the front suspension was particularly difficult and it required very careful cleanup of paint and flash and just making sure all the joints were nice and square on the main body part. Otherwise the front wheels would not sit square.
Then it was time for my favourite part of any F1 car build, decal time. This always brings the car to life. Neither of these two cars have particularly big decal sheets, but many of the individual decals themselves are quite large. Surprisingly, the paint was sufficiently smooth that I didn't need to use a gloss coat beneath the decals this time. For the 1976 car, I went with number three, Jody Schechter's car. And for the 1977 car, I went with number four, which was De Paillet's car. I did want to do Ronnie Peterson's car, but I'm going to do the Lotus 78 in Peterson's livery in the very near future. The only parts of this process that worried me were the curved yellow stripes over the side pods on the 76 car and the um, Travelers Checks, First National Bank Travelers Checks logos, which had to be cut on the 77 car. But as it turns out, I didn't need to be worried they both went down very well indeed. Then we have a small few details left to finish the cars. and a coat of light blue paint for the driver's overalls. To me I recommend a darker blue, but reference photos that I've seen suggest a um, lighter shade. Drivers get their own decals too, and surprisingly the helmet ones went down really well despite the curved surface, as long as I applied lots of Tamiya Mark Fit. At this point the engines were still separate so they needed their final details too, including connecting those hoses to the radiators. Before I did it I thought that would be quite complicated but it turned out to be quite straightforward and everything bent nicely. The tyres have moulded on Goodyear logos. I did consider sanding them off because Tamiya do give us decals for them, but in the end I decided to go old school and dry brush white paint onto them. And with that done, my models were complete.
And there we go guys, that was my dual build of the Tyrol P34s in the 76 and 77 liveries. I hope you enjoyed the video, I really enjoyed building these, partly because I'm an F1 fan, partly because they're Tamiya kits and they go together really well, and partly because I really like getting two models built out of my stash and onto the shelf. Both the kits were fantastic and of course in this era of F1 there's plenty to see, the engines are exposed, the bodywork can be removed to see the inside of the cockpit and so on. So I really enjoyed the process, I'm really pleased with the results. I feel like I'm making good progress on uh, improving my F1 builds. So all happy here from me. I do have a number of other dual builds that I could do including the Lotus 78 in the standard John Play Special livery and the Imperial Tobacco livery. I've got the Academy 120th scale Benetton B195, which is quite a rare kit actually. Somehow I got hold of two of them, and one of them can be converted into the Ligier. And I've got a few more that escape my uh, memory at the moment. Of course I build lots more apart from F1 kits. So if you'd like to see future videos, then please remember to hit subscribe if you haven't already. I would like to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. And of course to all of you for watching, commenting, sharing, liking and so on. I hope to see you in the next video and until then, have fun modelling.